What's happening, webheads? It's time for the latest FOC. You're not going to want to miss the latest, the greatest, the newest comic books getting ready to hit store selves. If you guys love this kind of content, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if there's any comics here on this list, make sure you let your shop know because you're not going to want to miss out because there are definitely some great ones getting ready to hit store shelves. So let's get into it, guys. Let's kick this bad boy off with Marvel. There's a lot of Deadpool hype right now, and here we go. We got Deadpool issue one. This is written by Cody Ziegler. So right now he's writing Miles Morales. Now he's going to be writing Deadpool, and uh, this is just going to be a fresh new start for the character. Uh, row one on the right will be a foil, and obviously it will be priced um, based off of what your comic book shop sells for these foil covers. I want to know in the comments below, are you guys super hyped about this new Deadpool Wolverine movie coming out? I saw the trailer the other day. It looks super awesome. There's a lot of variants for this one, so make sure you let your shop know which variants you want. Then we have Web of Spider-Man issue one. And what this book is, it's kind of like almost a preview book. It's It's books or the stories that are getting ready to come out for the entire year of 2024 leading into 2025. This is not necessarily a bad thing because this gets you into certain stories that you might want to pick up when it comes to the character. And if you love Greg Capullo's artwork, you're going to want to pick up this cover art because it's pretty awesome. There are other variant covers for this as well. So if you're a Spider-Man collector and you like the different covers, this one's going to be for you. Now we move on to X-Men Forever. This is issue one. Uh, this story, I guess, is coming off the pages of Immortal X-Men. So if you guys read that series, you're going to be into this book probably. This is going to be a book that I probably pass. It's got a couple of gorgeous covers on there, especially that Mystique one. But when it comes to reading it wise, I think I'm going to be completely lost on everything here. So I'm going to have to pass when it comes to the reading portion of this comic. But again, some of these variants look absolutely awesome. Cool little action figure variant there with Cyclops. Next, we move on to the Ultimate Comics, and here we have Ultimate Spider-Man Issue 2 Second Printing. At this point, guys, we know that Ultimate Spider-Man and anything that has the Ultimate name attached to it is going to be in high demand, so let your shop know that you want this. And this cover is pretty cool, as it's a sketch cover, as it has Green Goblin on there, and then it's got some of the, all the other cast of characters as well. Looks great. Make sure you let your shop know. Then with that being said, we also have the Ultimate X-Men X -Men issue one second printing. So this is Peach Momoko's story, her vision of her X-Men that she's created. I guess there's this new Storm character that's been introduced that's getting some hype as well. So again, if you didn't put the first printing on your FOC, make sure you put it on your FOC this time so you don't miss out on the story. Moving on with Marvel, we have Star Wars Jango Fett. This is issue one. He embarks on a brand new mission as seen in Star Wars Revelations. So this one is written by Ethan Sachs. I thought he, uh, Jango Fett is a pretty cool character, obviously the father of Boba Fett. And sometimes, you know, it's not bad to see, you know, stories of the generation before. And uh, that might be kind of cool if you're a Star Wars fan. Uh, we have a few different variants as well when it comes to this story. More Star, Star Wars here. We have Star Wars Visions Takashi Okazaki <laughs> issue one. So I remember they had this Star Wars Visions in a while ago. And uh, it was an all right book. There wasn't much dialogue to it. Uh, I think it takes a certain type of reader to like this. Maybe gives you a little bit of a you know, last Ronan vibe to it or whatnot. So if you're into this, go ahead and check this one out. More Star Wars, a lot of Star Wars is coming FOC. We have Star Wars, the High Republic. Um, this point, we are on issue five of the series. And uh, I stopped reading this, I think, after issue one. Again, I'm not a huge Star Wars fan when it comes to the comics. I do think they're overpriced. And the stories are not always that great. But I know there are some fans of the High Republic. 
Okay, next we go on to Wolverine Madripoor Knights. This is issue two. This one's written by Christopher Claremont. This takes place after the X Men, the Uncanny X Men issue 268. As we have a story with Captain America, Black Widow, and Wolverine as they go and embark on this mission to try to retrieve some extraterrestrial alien technology. And uh, I think it, the first issue was kind of cool. You had some old school, you know, vibes going there with Wolverine and his dialogue. It was fun. I really liked it. So I'm looking forward to issue number two. Next, we have a really good book. I, I just got done actually today on Saturday reading issue two of Vengeance of the Moon Knight. And uh, this is issue three of the series. And we have this dark Moon Knight that's come into play here. And we get the other characters that are battling uh, uh, battling him. And they're not sure who he is. Uh, so I think this is a great book. The artwork is fantastic. I like Tigra in the book. I like seeing her in there. Very emotional book in the second issue. So I'm curious to see who this new dark Moon Knight actually is. Next, from Marvel, we have Spider-Boy. This is issue five. Uh, this series has been surprisingly good. I think Dan Slott has done a great job at making Bailey Briggs his own character, right? He's not really, you know, it started off as Spider-Man sidekick, but he is pretty much his own deal. I mean, he, he goes on his own adventures. He's starting to acquire his own villains. And we're starting to learn a little bit more about his origin story. I like the way it's drawn. Um, definitely, you know, maybe this might not be for you. But if you like a lighthearted comic or if this is a comic that you want to introduce let me take that back. If there is a comic out there that you want to introduce to your son or daughter, I think Spider-Boy is going to be it. Pretty cool variant covers as well. Then we have Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. This is issue two. Uh, first issue... It was okay, but I don't think I personally will be continuing it. There was this mysterious letter that winds up arriving to Scarlet Witch, and Quicksilver's in play as well in this series, and she reads this letter, and she finds out that it's something that her brother should not read, and her brother gets all pissed off. He goes running away, and then all of a sudden, the wizard uh, it comes into action here to try to defeat uh scarlet witch in quicksilver not bad but just not my cup of tea so uh if you're into this these characters i think you might like this book all right next we have the resurrection of magneto so first issue was pretty cool i still have to read issue two i think that comes out this particular comic book week i think or next week and this one is written by Al Ewing, and it's way out there, man. I mean, like, way out there. And that's how Al Ewing is. But, again, Magneto is slowly making his way back into the X-Men universe. So we're going to see what issue two has to offer. Fantastic Four fans, there is a book for you as well. This is The Secret of Franklin Richards. So... You know, Franklin Richards has been immortal, he's been a god, he's a mega level mutant, and uh, he's created life in entire universes, so you're going to get a story just about him. So if you're into him, you like the Fantastic Four, check this one out. Main cover, absolutely gorgeous, as you have um, Alex Ross that does the main cover. Some pretty cool other variants also. Now, for the facsimile collectors out there, because we're getting facsimiles every week, now we have The Amazing Spider-Man issue 254, and this one is a story about the early days of the black suit and Spider-Man going against, I think it might be the Hobgoblin or, if I remember correctly, the Jack-O-Lantern. So... These are cool issues to have if you've never read them before. I have, I think, a couple copies of this book, but you know what? I might pick up this facsimile anyway, just because you guys know it. I'm the Amazing Spider-Man collector. All right. And now we have the Secret Wars facsimile edition as well. It comes both in foil and non-foil. Uh, just obviously let your shop know what you want. Now, issue four is the... I do I have this main one? No, I think I have this one now. I don't have issue one. But uh, I've been collecting the main run, the original run, these facsimiles, and the foils. 
it's just a me thing, right? It's just like, I would love to have three separate sets of Seeker Wars, an iconic story. If you've never read it, this is your time to read it coming out in floppies, right? If you want to collect an Omni from it, you can do that as well. So there it is, Superhero Secret Wars issue four. <laughs> All right, and then we have Night Thrasher. We're on issue two here. Um, the first issue was okay for me. It wasn't the best. Uh, it was a little bit generic, but they're bringing back uh, this character from the old New Warrior series. He was the leader of this team. We wind up seeing that he, he disappeared and now he's back and his father and mother's empire is kind of corrupted and he wants to close it down. People felt like they left them in the dust or they're trying to get revenge on him. It's all right, man. It's okay. I want to see a lot more action and I want to see where this story actually goes. I give the writer a lot of credit. He had a lot to come up with to, you know, let the reader know where this character has gone all this time. All right. And now we go on to Spider-Woman. This is issue five. An unlikely team up here. We have Spider-Woman Jessica Drew teaming up with Bailey Briggs. So I know, like I said, that Bailey Briggs doesn't rely his own book with other spider characters, but it's not to say that he doesn't team up with other spider characters in their other books, which I think is perfectly fine because he has to get involved in the Marvel Universe. Everyone forgot who he was and he was trying to let everybody know is like, I used to work with all you guys and now he's kind of, you know, sprinkling himself in there and I, and I like that. So I'm interested to see what this story has to offer now that gang war is over. This is when I said I want this series to actually pick up. Next, we have Black Panther. Um, this is issue 10. So, I'm not a huge fan of Black Panther main series. I'm going to be reading the Ultimate series. So, this is the final confrontation against the Gray Wolf. So, whoever the Gray Wolf is, there you go. That's what that one's about. But I am a fan of the Invincible Iron Man. This is issue 16. Obviously, this is one of the best fall of the House of X books there is. Tony Stark being married to Emma Frost, seeing the relationship develop over the months has been actually quite entertaining. And seeing his uh, brain work to try to stop Orcus has been really good as well. We've had Riri Williams. We've had Forge in this comic. Definitely, I feel like it's an underappreciated Iron Man run. So I'm looking forward to this one as well. Then we have Blade, issue nine. I think when it comes to Blade, I think this is going to read, uh, lead into the whole Blood Hunt comic event that's about to, you know, go crazy here in Marvel. But right now, he's trying to defeat this person by the name of the Adanya, and he's going to all kinds of different people for help. Uh, it's been an entertaining book. The artwork's been pretty good. There's some good action in here. Probably one of the best Blade series I've read in quite a while. All right, then we have... Captain Marvel, issue six. I have nothing else but to say Captain Marvel, issue six. I have not read a single issue of it. I don't know what it's about. The main cover, does it have Hulkling in there? I don't, I don't know. Man. So if you like Captain Marvel, there you go. You have it. Now for this week's uh, FOC, there is no DC. So we're going to go right into these independent comic books. And we're going to go into I Heart Skull Crusher, issue one. So, yeah, there's this 18-year-old Trini will do anything to compete in her favorite sport. Screaming pain ball. I don't even want to begin to know what the heck that book is about. So, yeah, if you're interested in that, go ahead and check that one out. All right, and then we have uh, Thundercats. There's a lot of variants for Thundercats issue two. You can expect that from Dynamite. First issue was okay. You know, I thought it would be better. I felt like they crammed a lot into the first issue and you're kind of all over the place. But it did give you an idea of like who lion -O is, what his struggle is. You got to see the villain in the comic. So yeah, it's okay. I thought it could be a little bit better. But, uh, you know, it is what it is at this point. And hopefully the, the book will continue to get better. I wanted the artwork to be better than it was, though. All right. And then for the G.I. Joe fans, here we go. We have uh, G.I. Joe, Real American Hero, reprints, 
301, 302, and 303. So if you want to check out those reprints you missed out on those first time arounds, go ahead and pick those ones out. Then we have the Misfortune Eyes. This is issue one. Uh, I'm not even sure what this one is. Uh, double size debut issue from Critics' Choice Award winning actress Brooklyn Prince. Okay. A teen girl wakes up to discover she can see human auras while embarking on a journey to find what her future may hold. She uncovers a hidden psychic town. There, she will soon learn about her mother's troubled past. All right. Could be something I might be interested in, or maybe not. So, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> then we have Napalm Lullaby Issue 1. What is that? That sounds quite weird. This one's from... Uh, is this from Image Comics? Yeah, this one's from Image Comics. This is a series premiere. So, this is from Rick Remender. Uh, if you like Rick Remender, you might want to check this particular book out. I might, just because it's him. All right, and then we have One Hand. This is issue two. I think this is the one that's written by Rom V. Um, one Hand issue one was quite the murder mystery about this guy who keeps popping up after this longtime detective has been on the case, right? And uh, he was about to retire, and then this killer strikes again. And he puts like this one hand on these walls or bricks and puts all these crazy edges and markings, kind of like what you see on the main cover. And then it's tied in by another book called Six Fingers. So I'm curious to see what the second issue has to offer here. All right, <laughs> going back to more freaking Star Wars, but this time it's from Dark Horse. We have Star Wars High Republic Phase 3 Crash Landing One Shot Issue 1. There's too much long of a title there. Gee whiz, man. I'm not, forget that one. All right, let's move on here. So we have Transformers Issue 6 End of the Arc. One will stand, one will fall. The Autobots versus Decepticons, this is it, and someone isn't going to survive. Guys, let me tell you, the last issue of freaking Transformers was the best one yet. This book just keeps getting better and better and better. And the Megatron canon shows you how powerful it is based off of what happened in the last issue. And if you see cover B here on the right side, yes, we got introduced to that character as well. My gosh, so well done. I don't like what I see in the main cover though. That's crazy. But I think this is going to be the last story drawn by Daniel Warren Johnson, which is a shame. I don't know if this book is going to be quite the same without his artwork because it has such a distinct feel to it. But this is so good, man. So, so good. All right. Then we go to the Yosagi Yojimbo fans. Uh, yes. So we have Yosagi Yojimbo Crow, issue one, cover A, done by Saki. Um, you know, Yosagi Yojimbo has been around forever. I got introduced to him when the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles came around. And uh, I think there's a huge fan base for him. So if you like this series, go ahead, check it out. It's from Dark Horse. Then we have AWA Upshot. We have Little Black Book, issue one. Kind of looks like a Western. It says, don't miss the start of this hard-boiled neo-Western thriller. So yeah, this one is written by Jeff McComsey. Um, he wrote Grendel and Kentucky. So yeah, you know, AWA books, some of them are actually really pretty good, guys. All right, so a couple books that didn't seem to pop up on the letter. One was a Ghostbusters comic that was getting ready to come out. And there's another one called Minor Threats. So hopefully you guys saw the images here that I searched for them. And again, if there's any comics on this list that you liked, let your shop know now so you don't miss out. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching Comic Book Corner 2.0. If you love the content, I'll leave you more content right here for you to click on. And as always, guys, support the local comic shops. Keep buying, keep collecting, but more importantly, always read your comics. Guys, I'll see you real soon and enjoy your weekend.